So good morning, everybody. I think it's time to, to start. It is my great honor to welcome you all to the International Conference Resonance 3, the exhibition as medium in the block. I speak here on behalf of WWP Avu Research Center team uh, that prepared this conference together. And I would like to thank especially Eva Ellingerová, Luisa Kotočová, and Dagmar Svatošová, and of course, many other people here at the Academy who helped us with preparation. So on behalf of all of us, uh, I welcome you here most warmly. The AVO Research Center has been part of the Academy of Fine Arts in Prague for more than 20 years. And it was the first research institute of its kind established as part of an art college in the Czech Republic. Its activities complement the existing branch of scholarly research, activities of the Art History Institute of Czech Academy of Science, art history departments at the Czech universities, and other state and private schools, museums, galleries, um, and initiatives. Our mission is to contribute to knowledge of the development of Czech art history after 1945, and to place it within, within the broader international context. We have been publishing peer review journal, the notebook for art theory and related zones for over 15 years. And we are involved in other professional publication activities and research. The theme of today's conference is based on the research we have been conducting at the WWP Avru uh, Research Center since uh, uh, 2015, which resulted in the 2020 uh, in the book, the exhibition as medium, Czech art 1957 to 1999, compiled and written by Dagmar Svatošová, Terezie Nekvindová, and myself. I'm happy that thanks to today's conference, we can see our extensive research on the transformation of exhibition uh, in Czech art in a broader Central European context. In the context of the dialogue between East and West, which was significant for second half of the 20th century. <clears throat> this conference is being held within uh, the framework of research project resonances supported by Visegrad grant in cooperation with Hungarian Central European Research Institute for Art History, Kempki, and Arpul Art Research Center in Budapest, the Department of Art History of the Comenius University in Bratislava, and the Piotr Piotrowski Center for Research on East Central Europe at the Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznań. The project focuses on the regional and trans-regional culture transfer in the art of the 1970s, but its scope goes well beyond it. The Prague Conference is the third international conference in a row that the Resonance Project had managed to organize. It follows up on Resonance 1, which was entitled Nonconformist Art Under Socialism in Central Eastern Europe and its Transnational Network, Parallel Structures, Communicating Channels and Nodes. The first conference was held in March due to the pandemic online. And the second, Resonance II, with the title Beyond Friendship, Regional Cultural Transfer in the Art of 1970s, took place in Budapest in May. Recordings of all conferences can be found on the project website, and I hope we will add ours as well. At this moment, I would like to thank all those who participate in the preparation of today's conference within the project. I would especially like to thank the Kempke team, Zsuzsa Laszlo, David Feher, and Emma Shekuti, who provided us with the necessary project support. I would also like to thank 
the other project partners, Hanna Budeus, Magda Radomska, and Andrea Batorova. A big thank you goes to the keynote speaker, Lucy Steeds, Gabriel Schwitte, Christian Nye, and Clara Kemp-Welsh. Uh, we really appreciate that uh, you took the time to be here with us today. I would also like to thank to the moderators of uh, each panel and all the speakers. In preparing for the conference, we were pleasantly surprised by how many interesting and quality abstracts we received in response to our open call. It was extremely difficult to choose just 12 of them to fit the presentations into two days. Our aim was to prepare a multi-layered but consistent program. This is one of the reasons why we decided to restrict the time of each presentation to 20 minutes, although this can prove insufficient. <laughs> However, we find it important to give space to different topics, methods, and of course the discussion uh, that is scheduled after each of the panels. I believe that the next two days will be inspiring and we will look at the issue of the medium of exhibition and its development in the second half of the 20th century from different perspectives. We will be moving in a large space from general reflections on the role of exhibition histories in art history, methodology, and the specificity of exhibition histories in the former Eastern Bloc space we will involve ourselves in detailed probes of key exhibitions and their significance at the time, as well as contemporary discussions on the role of art in society. We are interested in the dialogue between different cultures of Central Europe, as well as the imaginary dialogue between the former East and West. We will also touch upon the role of institutional operation, the relationship between the official and unofficial scene, as well as the transformation of interpretative strategies in recent decades. The aim of the Resonance Project is to conduct an international and intercultural dialogue in the rich and complicated space of Central Europe. The research and publication activities of many of us will hopefully gradually lead to a better understanding of the complex historical transformations of art history in this space. In the spirit of Piotr Piotrowski's uh, legacy to whom last night was dedicated, perhaps the full emancipation of the history of art in our geographical space will come about. The place from which we speak is always crucial, which is why I'm so glad that despite the threat of another pandemic wave, we managed to meet here in Prague, literally in the heart of the Central Europe, as Czechs like to think of their capital. Um, I hope that it will be the, the opportunity to discuss things together over the course of two busy days, uh, but also to talk of record, to share information about our projects, uh, research plans, and support each other in these difficult times. I also extend my warmest welcome greetings to those who cannot be here with us and who are following us online. Um, to conclude uh, this brief introduction, please allow me to share with you some remarks on the issue of exhibition histories as we have been thinking about them in our research and preparation of the aforementioned book, The Exhibition as Medium, which was also impetus of conveying this conference. It is a book that is a uh, thousand pages long with several hundred images detailed reconstruction of 60 carefully selected exhibitions and three introductory studies. The topics covered by uh, my co-authors uh, Dagmar Svatoshova and Terezia Nekvindova will be presented as part of the conference program. 
So I would like to speak here uh, mainly from my uh, own perspective. At the beginning uh, of our research, we realized how important a role the exhibition played in, played in shaping the history of art during the second half of the 20th century and how little we actually know about its forms and changes. <clears throat> when we compiled a working list of 100 key uh, exhibitions of the Czech post-war period, we were struck by how little documentation of these events was known and available. Gradually, we discovered that even basic research on the institutional functioning of exhibition spaces, the relationship between gallery operation and the contemporary establishment, and the economic mechanisms of exhibition practices were absent. And that for most exhibitions, we had only catalogs and reviews published in the press at the time. For some, we didn't have even that. Thus began the painstaking work of gathering available documentation, archival research, and the research for living participants for individual events. It was very disappointing to discover that most galleries did not have functioning archives of their activities. But the House of Art in Brno and National Gallery in Prague being the notable exceptions. Even the archive of the Union of Czechoslovak Visual Artists, the key organization that controlled exhibition operations throughout the period of state socialism, was not fully accessible. And researching it was especially like looking for a needle in a haystack. In our, our basic orientation of this opaque terrain, we were greatly helped by research of Eva Skopalova, who made from available sources, inventory of more than 12,000 exhibitions held in the individual state, municipal, and union galleries um, of the exam period. This is just from our book, part of that list of this sea of, of the exhibitions. Um, so how did we select the 60 exhibitions uh, from this really vast uh, number of events. It was, of course, an extremely difficult and repeatedly discussed decision. Some of major exhibitions were excluded simply because it was almost impossible to find out anything about them. But the key point was that we used a different method from that applied in Bruce Altshuler inspiring books Salon du Biennale exhibitions that made art history, or Jens Hoffmann's The Showtime, the 50 most influential exhibitions of contemporary art. Our goal was not to document the best exhibitions, but rather to analyze the terrain and reflect on the transformation of the medium of exhibition itself. We therefore chose those exhibitions that represented a specific, specific example or model that were symptomatic and representative in some way. Of course, these were often exhibitions that had a significant impact on art history and reflected its transformation, but that was not our primary concern. Our main intention was to show what types of exhibitions took place and why, who prepared them and under what conditions, and what the contemporary and later reaction to these events was. We perceived the exhibition as a, an autonomous form of cultural production that serves to promote certain forms of art and legitimize it. We were interested in the means by which the medium of the exhibition achieves this and how this changes over time. The selection of exhibitions was thus very diverse, juxtaposed with official shows demonstrating the cultural ideology of the time, as well as various forms of exhibition organized in so-called second culture. 
such as apartment exhibitions, secret exhibition in official institutions, or site-specific projects organized on a semi-official basis. As Pavel Bichler aptly wrote in the catalog, the show, his definition of exhibition is, the show is the site of exchange where interest is produced, cultivated, socialized, and organized. The organization of the show is a comment on art and on the wider context of culture, economy, history, and politics in which the show is taking place. According to the Oxford English Dictionary Online, exhibition means submitting for inspection, uh, a public examination. Our selection looked at all of these aspects, how the exhibition is produced, how art is cultivated and socialized through it, but also how it falls under public inspection. Personally, I perceive the exhibition as a space time um, in which various power relations uh, and interests operate, a field in which cultural values, but also artistic and exhibition strategies shift. One could use Pierre Bourdieu's terminology and speak of a field of cultural production, a social space in which economic and cultural capital collide. Not only do the specific examples of exhibitions demonstrate unique contemporary moments, but they also reveal general and timeless principles of transformation of aforementioned mechanisms. They can also become a tool for international comparison and mirror of national, regional, and global social transformations. In my introductory study in the book, uh, which I have titled The History of Exhibitions, Exhibitions in History, I decided to present the broader political, institutional, and art historical context of the whole period. I probably do not need to emphasize that in researching the Czech history of art in the second half of the 20th century, it is impossible to avoid many pressing moments of political history and their impact on artistic production and the possibilities of its presentation. My text is therefore not only a broader commentary on the archive of exhibitions, but above all, an attempt to synthesize and formulate Czech art history of the post-war period through the prism of exhibition. If I were to list here some specific conclusions of our research, which of course is um, not entirely possible in such a complex work, I would have to say at the outset that for me the most important findings was how complex this new discipline of exhibition histories is and how much new we can learn from art history thanks to this method. In today's flood of Instagram exhibition photo reports, it's hard to imagine that until the 1960s, the photographic recording of an exhibition installation was rare. Attention was devoted to individual artwork as well as in art history. In reconstructing exhibitions, we were often referred to footage of openings, which as social events, uh, were documented and were behind the speakers uh, or audience could be glimpsed how exhibition was installed. This eventually led me to study the opening rituals themselves, uh, which changed considerably during the, the, the period under review and which I think speak in an interesting way about both the position of the exhibition in the cultural operation and the changing role of art in society. Another important insight for me was the realization of how diverse forms of exhibitions emerged in our culture space uh, in the second half of the 20th century. And here it should be noted that this was a space behind the Iron Curtain 
fully controlled by a, an elaborate censorship system where only a handful of orthodox official artists were allowed to exhibit in the so-called white cube, except, of course, brief periods of liberalization. Paradoxically, a number of original exhibition forms emerge under these conditions. The resilience and inventiveness of the artistic community, which at various times was relegated to the unofficial sphere and formed the so-called second culture, never ceased to fascinate me. In today's difficult times, the perseverance and bravery of those days can be inspiring. I'm not saying that um, I think that exhibition should, should once again be held in ruins, on tennis courts, or in a hop field. Rather, I want to highlight the will to communicate with the viewer, even under the most limited conditions, without financial security, often at the risk of criminalization. From the perspective of exhibition histories, however, the interpretation of these exhibition events presents a, an extremely interesting field. At the end of my text, I even attempted a kind of typology, which I think reveals the differences in the development of exhibitions before and behind the Iron Curtain. I believe that this conference will open up most of the issues raised. However, rather than draw any conclusions in my introduction, I would like to ask a few questions that are important to me. Is it possible to apply the procedures and concept of exhibition histories established in key research projects in the West to the history of exhibition in Central and Eastern Europe? And of course, the pressing question of how exhibitions, which in the former East, were often created in the makeshift conditions of the second culture, can compete with the professionally prepared and institutionally protected exhibitions of the official culture, of socialism, or with Western exhibition operations. What are the advantages and disadvantages of exhibition histories for our understanding of art history compared to traditional art history, which focuses on individual artists and artistic tendencies? The exhibition stands at the center of complex relationships between artists, curators, critics, political ideologues, bureaucrats, economists, and viewers. As such, it represents historically conditioned format for presentation of art, creating a special context for the encounter with the artwork. Without this context, we cannot fully understand it and interpret it. Does the method of exhibition histories then make research into institutional operations, which in the case of exhibition um, reaches back to political and economic principles and political economic science of the time, but also touches a standard of work safety or stuffing. So is this all now part of art history? And... Uh, question that probably bothers us all, and which I think will be partly answered by Dagmar Svatoshova contribution, how to make past history uh, ex exhibition present again. And uh, perhaps one final point for discussion. Um, the exhibition became a key medium for the presentation and communication of art in the 20th century. Is it the same in the 21st century? Exhibition remain a type of event uh, which the basic rules still apply. Uh, they are an artistically negotiated space in which visitors are expected to move along a certain trajectory, preferably quietly and with sufficient distance from the works on display. Is it time for a change? What about art history? Have to say about it. 
Thank you for your attention. And once again, very warmly, welcome. <laughs>